Hello everyone, welcome to the Minecraft stream, stream, summary, stream, stream, forgetting how to speak thingy. For once, I, um, for the first time in my career, I do not have two monitors. Normally I have two monitors, so I can see if this is fine and this is fine and it's actually recording. Hopefully you can see something. If not, I guess I'll record it again until it works. So, what happened on the stream? Well, let's start with Pete's stuff. Pete made steel seeds. Okay, done. <laughs> no, um, <clears throat> Pete's been, you know, doing the, the usual, as we know, with, uh, all of the various iriums, the various levels of these, very difficult to make. We've got Insanium Essence and 30 of them, and if you remember from last week or the week before, <clears throat> having to craft those up from Inferium, well, that multiplies it very quickly, geometrically in fact. So, uh, we do have one steel plant, which is producing, as you can guess, steel. Um, we also have Mithril, we also have Compressed Iron, um, these things already existed I guess. More compressed iron, nice. Lithium. Uh, so the seeds that grow into materials, ooh, it's just grown as we were looking, look at that. Uh, the Making the seed requires the material and also a tier of these essences, depending on the type of seed, depending on the material that you're making. So um, if we have a look at steel seeds, tier 4 and is this much supremium this much steel and a tier 4 crafting seed tier 4 crafting seed is made from tier 3 crafting seed and a bunch of stuff which is made from a tier 2 crafting seed and a bunch of stuff made from tier 1 crafting seed and prudentium which is already not the lowest tier because that's made of inferium uh, and a tier 1 crafting seed is also made from inferium and you need a base crafting seed which actually is quite easy to get so there's a lot of crafting to get from you know that base seed all the way up to a steel seed but we have a steel seed now um, it costs a lot of steel to make it but it will continue to produce steel until cows come home now that produces steel essence which is this thing here so if we have a look at what steel essence is used for and this is how most of mystical agriculture works um, you'll find that eight of them in a ring actually produces two steel ingots, which is quite generous, I would say, considering the nature of the crafting in the rest of the uh, mod pack so far. So once you've got eight of those, which we have more than eight of, um, you can craft them into uh, two steel ingots, basically on demand. Now, Pete did link this up to the system. So I think that maybe if we go over here, you can probably find that essence. If this is working, there we go. Yeah, here it is. So we could create a crafting recipe. So if ever we're running out of um, steel, we can have it craft some from the steel essence. And that's going to fill up that drawer, you know, until the drawer's full, which is great. Um, so well done, Pete. That's going to be good to fill the smeltery, various alloys. Proves the charcoal supply, a limiting factor on steel. Awesome. Uh, well, now the limiting factor has gone away because you can just make some. <laughs> uh, let's see what else other people have done. So Mike made sprinklers. So there's two sprinklers here. And ideally, you'd put these in there somewhere. Um, they keep the crops watered. But in at least I know enough about this one and that you can put uh, bone meal in this one. I'm also wondering why there's no particle effect. So I'm not sure whether these are actually on or not. The fact that this is splashing me kind of implies that it's doing something. Oops, I didn't do it. Put water below to enable. Uh, and this one, because I remember that you had to put um, a pipe into this to make it work. So I think, yeah, you need water below them to make them actually, you know, sprinkle. Let me out. Thank you. But they're there, so we can use those to sort of improve the, the growth of those crops if we need to. Um, let's have a look at some of the building that people have done. So we burned down the barracks because I was never going to finish it. <laughs> I just started putting blocks down thinking this will be nice and then might build that house and what have you. So now where the barracks used to be, first of all, there's just floating obsidian. So there's that. And then secondly, the fence has gone. I'm guessing it's now over there somewhere, or maybe we just don't have a fence anymore. Look at all those um, ender pearls. Yeah, there's no fence between here and here, but look, there's our uh, mob spawner. How's our iron thingy doing? Haven't looked over here for a long time. 
You remember this. It's got these zappy things that don't hurt. <laughs> what are they for? I don't know. Maybe someone will tell me in the comments. So let's go uh, actually talk about stuff that we have been doing. Pete and probably Mike, I think, maybe, were working on building this building around the, um, the, the storage area, because this is all just open to the sky. It's still open to the sky, but that's uh, now it's open to the sky with a wall around it, so that's brilliant. This has actually changed, so you'll notice that I think some of these were originally here. This is the original pillar, um, and the rest of it's been surrounded. Rip, Bob, and Snowy, Snowman down that way. I remember the Snowy, the Snowman. So this is all still in here. It's just a little bit neater. This is kind of cramped, so maybe we should look at moving this. Uh, Lawrence has done some stuff I don't understand, which has produced some cool stuff. One of which is the uh, My People Need Me staff, where you right click and you go whoosh up into the air, which is kind of like this, but quicker and I think repeatable. I'm not sure. But if you use your Elytra, maybe it's, it's really good. I can't remember what you said. Go and have a look at Lawrence's video at the end of this video to find out, because he will be explaining all of the things he did. Oh, it's still raining in here, of course. Uh, incense of running fast. One of my people need me. Flowers to make mana from XP or lava. Flowers to make clay from sand. There's a lot of clay. Um, it's got an amulet of double jump. Fenced off the fairy. Okay, he keeps falling into the fairy thing, apparently. Uh, we were talking about maybe automating the petals for mystical agriculture, which is not mystical agriculture, it's Britannia. The Britannia petals. Um, let's go and have a look up there. Whoosh. Whoosh. Here we are. So, Britannia, if you remember, is about making flowers out of petals, and the petals are grown grown from flowers that we find in the world. So you pick the petals off the flowers, like these ones. These are mushrooms, actually, but you get the idea. But to grow a flower, you can put one of these petals in the ground and bone meal it. Do we have a, can I exper uh, demonstrate experiment? Same thing. No. So you bone meal the thing, but you have to break it with a pair of shears. And then you can craft it into more petals so you can craft petals out of petals and here's an emergency supply just in case we think that we might be able to manage to do that automatically with a judicious array of um, planters and users and stuff like that but we have to make sure that it happens in order and doesn't happen more than one at once it'll be slow maybe we can automate it there's quite a lot um, and you can sort of spam them on the ground if you wanted to uh, just to get a bunch more and forget about it for ages so it's not that important um, the other thing that Lawrence was talking about is these uh, various tanks that he's now got, which could probably be hooked up to the AE system so that you can get fluids out of that. The only difficulty is that it depends whether you want to auto-craft them or not, as Tristan has said. So if you would like to be able to make more of it on demand, then that's a lot of effort. You can probably hook it up to the system, make more of it when you need to. Uh, and just sort of keep an eye on it yourself. That's probably the simplest way of doing it. And then they can all go down there with the tower of the weird T-shaped thingy of fluid nature. So here's the weird T-shaped thing of fluid nature. Um, not quite sure why it couldn't just have a little, you know, annex. But okay, maybe we can do that next time. It's using 16 of 32 channels up there. Coming out of it, 21 of 32 channels. So it has got a P2P tunnel on it. Um, they haven't used a colour to say which output it is, though. Oh, is that white? It is. It's the white one. Okay, so tell a lie. They have. Fine, I will use my dank null. <sighs> Thanks for being helpful. More like dirt null. Let's trust them now, doing stuff. So let me, let's see what I did. That's what other people have done. I'm sure there's more to cover. I don't really follow what people have done. We did kill uh, what is Lawrence is called a Zeldarian knight, which makes a lot of sense because it was the sort of knight that you get in the old Zelda games where you have to wait for it to do a proper attack and then stab it when it's... You know what I mean. Um, we set up... I moved the, Here, there used to be the thing that I was going to use to make plates, so I've moved that because Tristan pointed out well, at least between us, we pointed out to one another that um, 
we need to do it better. So this is the setup that I for science in the for science video, I think. But it's, um, that was where I was going with it. In here we have the thing that makes all the things. Uh, you can do that, but it knocks you out of sync. I guess it. Let's cover it. So we have an ME interface with 64 of each, but this one's got 128 because we seem to need a lot of them, or at least I fancied that we needed more of those than anything else. It's outputting 64 of each type, but it's also got a crafting card. So if it can't output 64 because there aren't 64 to output, it will make some. It also knows how to make them. The way it makes them is it puts them into this chest, which I can't open. I thought I was lagging out, but I can't open the chest because there's a solid block on top of it. That's fine though. In the chest, you will get the ingot required to craft the thing, which will go in here. And I've used an, a reinforced servo because it has round robin mode. Round robin mode is great because it means that as it pulls something out, it ignores the distance from uh, inventory to inventory and instead puts one in each. So it distributes the workload across these compactors. This compactor is reinforced because we were seeing how fast it would go. Uh, it goes a bit faster. It uses twice as much RF, but doesn't go twice as fast. But that's okay. Uh, does it use twice as much or can it just hold twice as much? Unsure. Good question. Anyway, so it puts the thing in the thing and then out the back, the completed plate is dragged. And the reason for that is that you can't attach this. You can't output the same way you input because what it's going to do is it's going to put the ingot for a, a multiple craft. It's going to put one of the ingots straight into the interface if it's connected to that chest. So it can. it has to be an isolated pipe, basically. And all that is doing is accepting things. So that's just a dump chest for the, um, for the ME system. So this is now trying to craft 64 of each of these if it needs to. It doesn't need to, it just exports them. And then on each side, we've got a storage bus. There's actually a second one. This one's doing uh, empowered Inori plates. This one's doing nether plates. So what we haven't done, the reason for this is to make sure we've got at least 64 of each one, or in the case of the red alloy ones, 128. Um, and what I wanted to, so I thought basically we followed suit with each one. This is doing that for the Enori plates. We could do the same for the steel plate. We could do the same for the nether quartz plate, which is why I, I actually had a gap here um, so that they all lined up. It doesn't really matter. This doesn't, it just doesn't ensure that we have 64 by doing it this way, but that's fine. And then the, <laughs> there's not enough room to have a look. So all you needed to do was to have a um, storage bus on each one. Now Tristan's discovered that you can have extract only mode. So what this was doing is it was if there was, for some reason, an empty thing, maybe you used all of them up, or in this case, there is simply space for it. Um, if there was no room anywhere else in the system, or if it just happened to pick this one first, it would put the thing, it would put a random item in one of these slots. And if there's no room in the system, it won't get absorbed into the system, or more likely, it's looping and constantly being put back in the same place. So you can actually have these as an export only mode, extract only mode, which means that it knows that the things are available to the system, so you can craft with stuff. It's not going to put anything into the inventory um, for storage. So it's safely just a little uh, buffer of stuff. And then down here, so I'm digging out all this place. I'm trying to avoid using that, but we could probably go down here now. Because that wall there, there's still skeletons everywhere. Look, right there. Can't get the staff. And there's another one up there. Anyway, um, ooh, there's some of that stuff that we like. So we need a bit more space here, so we might as well dig into there. Make expand in this direction, but for start for now, I've just dug down here. And this is the empower. This is the empower. Is that what it's called? The yeah, the empower, which was upstairs and was a manual process. So now this is an automated process. The only awkward bit is this for extracting from the empowerer. So we want to make sure that there's something that pulls out the finished item when it's empowered. And that's what this does. And it's got a whitelist of all the things that we know how to make here, which is the same list as, well, it's actually, uh, there's more things here than there are there. One, two, three, four, five, there should be six. There are not six. So we need to fill in the other two. That's easy. We can craft them. Let's pick one. We've got Restonia, Void, Palos, and Enori. Estonia, Enori, Palis, Diamantine, and Emeradic. So let's try Diamantine. Doesn't know how to make it, huh? 
and power diamantine, not diamantine. So if you wanted to craft one of these, what's it going to require? It's going to require a block of terra steel, Lawrence, and a block of diamond, which I can't be bothered making. Let's try the other one. Oh. This one's going to require also a block of terra. Never mind, we need terra steel and I can't be bothered finding any. Have we got terra steel in here? We've got one. <laughs> We've got one terra steel, so that's not going to work. Um, so the way that would work if we wanted to do it is it would take all the things that you need, put them in a chest. It's very much like what we just saw. It puts them in the chest. And then out of the chest, I will show you, even though I don't want to break everything. <clears throat> There's a standard server which pulls things into this system. And then this system is using signal and plated item ducts. I'm actually accidentally using dense ones because once again, I got thwarted and hoodwinked and scuppered and confused by the dastardly um, system which pretended that you make them in a carpenter, and you do. But if you have a look at the, so I wanted a signal and plated item, but if you look at the recipe and go to here, it tells you the recipe for all of them. Okay, so if you happen to be looking at this one first, I think these are in a different order as well, because I think this one was first. Because uh, obviously I don't want the boosting mixture ones, we can't make that. So I looked at this one and I put the thing, and I made a bunch of those by accident. So I've made dense ones, it doesn't actually make a difference. It doesn't change the speed at which they travel, it just changes the way they get rooted. And that doesn't matter, because underneath each of these, there is a filter. So each of these is only allowed to put one type of thing, eventually multiple, into the why was I sparkly? Into the display stand. So there's going to be one for each of those. And then there's also one underneath here, which is for the actual thing being actually powered up. So you notice that we've only taught it to make blocks. So if I were to make a Restonia crystal block, it's going to say, I've got a block of Restone, perfect. I need to make, that's not what I meant, I meant a empowered Restonia crystal block. It's going to craft a Restonia crystal block use everything else and put it all into the thing. So the Restonia crystal block is going in the middle. You need to craft a Restonia crystal block. How do you do that? Well, have a look over here. This is the set of unpowered of the other ones. For each of these, basically the way you do it is you take a block of redstone, in this case, and this is the thing that we saw. There's one of them up in the personal crafting area as well. You drop the thing onto the thing and it gets zapped. Luckily, it doesn't work for that. <laughs> but I wonder if it's coconut. No. So the pressure plate, when anything at all lands on it, sends a redstone pulse into the surrounding blocks, which includes this one. And then that goes zap and attacks the thing on the block. And then this can pick up only the things that we've told it to, the things that we're crafting. So it's got a whitelist for the things that we're crafting. And this is an open crate from Britannia. So the open crate from Britannia, I think we've seen one before on stream. I haven't explained one though. It's a crate with a, with a hole in the bottom. Right? So anything that you put into it, which you can't because it hasn't got an inventory, but anything that gets dropped into it, I wonder if you can drop into it. Doesn't look like it. So I think it's specifically for being piped into. Yeah. So if you pipe into it, which is the only way of getting anything into it, it will immediately fall out again because it has no bottom, <laughs> right? Which this counts as. So when the interface puts the crafting item into the open crate, it just falls straight through, gets zapped and picked up again immediately. Well, let's watch. See it? No. You heard it though. And now there's one Restonia thingy in here. Now there's one rest. Ooh. So who broke that? Where's, where's my... There you are. That is supposed to be not attached to there. Thank you. Otherwise it just keeps going round, obviously. Now there's one Restonia thingy in here. Yep, and then this needed that. So if you wanted to craft an empower Restonia crystal block, which is common, it needed to be able to craft one of those. 
Instead, it puts all the things in here, which very slowly get pulled out. So this could possibly be sped up. But if you make multiple at a time, who's complaining? Right? I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Ah, and just in time, I brought you back as the thing starts showing up. So that's arrived on there. And these other things are going to start popping onto the things. And as soon as they're all in place, it just does it goes on its own. Let's see where all these baddies are, shall we? I can hear you. Not showing up? No? Don't want to be. Well, there you are. Anyway. So this takes a, a few seconds. Is this like a whole minute? Maybe this takes? Let's not watch it for a whole minute. Oh, no, there it goes. And boom, and it's immediately gone. But it is making its way. Maybe we'll see it go through there. There it goes. So quite slow, because those are slow. And also, this takes time. And also, that servo is slow. But eventually, it will show up in here. So we've, we've automated the empowerment of that, albeit slow. Now, we have come up with an issue with the... Um, semi-automatic crafting and we'll see if it's been fixed so this was being an issue it was configured to only store this stuff which stopped things being put into it but it turns out there's an extract only mode which means i think this is now irrelevant however what we discovered is that it's going to pull things out that it has put in there for another recipe or the same recipe down the line or something something like that right so let's say you created ten carpenters right so this is going to use how's there only one stone available in the whole system <laughs> apart from all these right if anything is a crossover for example glass we've already got ten copper tanks which was the uh, actual issue right so if it knows that it doesn't have enough stuff to make the whole thing, including subtasks, it's not going to let you do it. But if it thinks it has enough, and then you do something else, or, or, or such things, um, basically if it's a single crafting operation to do the whole lot, it's going to say, I haven't got enough glass, I haven't got enough, look, it hasn't got enough trivarium, so it's not going to do it. If it had enough to do this, it would just put 10 sets of copper tank recipes, 10 sets of carpenter recipes and everything in here, and then pull out the things that, you know, the we've already covered the fact that uh, a 5x5 five five recipe that has a 5x5 five five recipe as part of it means you have this sort of sacrificial version of the inner recipe that goes into that chest and gets pulled out again so that it keeps working. Um, so if you then for example, were to craft something that needed glass, but there was no longer enough glass in the system because you would, you know, it was in here, but maybe it's also not giving you everything it needs. I think this is where the problem came, actually. If you put enough glass for 10 copper tanks, but you don't have enough copper plates, it's going to craft all the copper plates and put the glass in there. If you then, or something else then, crafts super glue, because we've automated super glue over here I think if you don't have enough super glue export super glue glue compound right and the glue compound is craftable using glass and sand so if glass has been put into this chest but we're waiting for plates and then something happens that means that super glue needs to be crafted it's going to pull the glass out of this chest if it's the only glass available or possibly even if it's not so we've put this at a very very high priority which apparently for extract mode is a low priority i don't know why that is the case um so that if there is any glass anywhere else in the system, it will prefer it. If there's any of anything in this chest is available somewhere else in the system, it will use it. And if not, tough. <laughs> that's, that's a you problem. But hopefully that will fix it. We can for science that as well. So I'll probably do a for science recipe. Here's a fluid. What's this doing? Ah, nice. Just cramming them wherever we can find them. So these can probably live downstairs. 
export bus. All oh, right, so this is ex constantly exporting water into the fluid transposer. So that in order to craft something, you only need a bucket to make a water bucket, a, a cell to make a water cell, which is something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time, and now it has been done. These can probably live downstairs because downstairs is, you know, where that sort of thing happens. Over here, we are using 17 of 32 channels. So we're getting, we're not currently worried, but it is plugged directly into the controller because I did this a long time. In fact, 28, we're using 28 channels down here, which is a lot. So all of this is using 28, we've only got four channels left, <laughs> but it's not using a P2P connection. So that's the thing that we could probably think about. Either we plug in P2P up here and then um, terminate, well, it'd have to terminate straight away here and here and here, <laughs> right? So it's a lot of terminals, lots of terminations to get that to work. Um, and then we can have another termination point down here. Uh, you know, each one could be a different network is how that works. Um, different P2P network. And then you, if you suddenly need more than 32, then you just make another network because this is using 28. All of this down here is 28. So if we were to make one P2P network out of all of this stuff, it would use one channel on this and then 28 down the actual network, it's the P2P network itself. And then we can add another one that then would be a second channel on this and another 32 are available to us. Um, so on this side, by the way, we did put some pulverizers in for the same basic reason. Sometimes you need stuff, right? So sandy glass dust is made in here and uh, fluid dust is made in here. I didn't put a you know, round robin on this, which is probably okay. I don't know what happens if that tries to make three things at once, but it can't at the moment. So who cares? Uh, but, you know, you can always replace it with something like that if you need to. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Tristan helped me with that mostly. Um, what else has he said? Uh, mining, lots of mining has happened. Lots of quests handing zins has happened. I bet there's even more to hand in as well. Uh, the kitchen workshop is actually complete. I think we might have done that last week. There's just I've just been thrown quests and not even read what they do, <laughs> especially when it comes to the white magic and uh, black magic. Because, look, all this stuff. Band of Mana, Band of Aura, Cirrus Amulet. Um, I'm wondering, actually... I'm wondering if I can be given a, a Sujourn of Sasha. This is one of my favourite things. It needs a Jeweler's Workshop, Mana Steel, Runes and Aquamarines, all of which I think we can make. These things I'm not sure about. So I'll have to ask Lawrence if this is a viable recipe to make right now. This is great because it means you don't have to jump up things like this. <laughs> That's all I care about. This is a step now. Step. And it's not the modded in thing where it automatically jumps. I'm not sure if that's modded or vanilla, but it automatically jumps for you. No, not that. It's a step, which is brilliant. It's one of my favorite things. And I think you go a little bit faster as well. So that's all I have for you. Go and watch Lawrence's video to see if he's understood more from the summaries of what people did than I have. But a lot of it was building, mining, automation of that thing. And then Lawrence did a whole bunch of stuff up there that uh, most people don't understand because it doesn't make any sense. Because <laughs> magic is not for the ken of mortal men. Or indeed anyone else. All right. Thanks for watching. Remember, clay flower thing. Cool. Uh, remember... 17.30, 19.30, half past seven on uh, Monday, UK time, the only real time. We'll be playing more of this. Lawrence's video will be forthcoming in one of these corners, and I hope this recorded because I'm going to press stop and I'll see you next time. Bye.